Hello there and welcome to Top Cast. Today we're going to be witnessing a game on retail. Yes, we are on the vanilla game right now, not the elite mod. I just, that's where the replay was submitted. Don't know why these guys were playing in retail, but that's what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, so we've got Bruce Campbell playing as a Commando Knob. Commando Knob's base DPS is pretty much the same as Elite Mod in range, but in melee, he's insane in retail. We'll see what can happen. His melee DPS is nuts. Big shooters do crazy damage in retail as well, so we'll see a lot more double shooter play here than double sluggers. We've got Copper Pock. Copper Pock. Copper Pock. Copper Pock. Copper Pock playing as a Chaos Sorcerer, and we've got Vagrant as the Warlock down here running Triple Guardians, and Cry as the Tech Marine. Yeah, knobs, knobs are really good as well in the late game, but the tier 2 for the Orcs is pretty weak here. Well, actually, War Truck's super duper cheap. Uh, look at that, so the Stun Bomb, if it hits any of the models in retail, it will stun the entire squad, whereas in Elite Mod, it will only uh, stun the actual models that get hit. You've also got specials propping on retreat, because that's the thing. Retreating units don't get the increased melee skill that they get in the elite mod. Guardians are back to 100 HP each, so they're very squishy by default. And over on this side, generally... The Chaos Sorcerer is a bit more simplistic. Most of his war gears are really bad. But then again, same with the Tech Marine. A lot of the war gears in retail are sort of left over and, and never got any buffs, of course, because Relic don't support the game anymore. And they remain in a, in a state that's not really very functional. So Bionix is good. Sorry, Bionix isn't good. I meant the Artificer is good with the uh, HP regen. Heretics are interesting in retail. They've got more HP than Elite. And certainly with the Aspiring Champion, they are way stronger. But they're 30 power for the Aspiring Champion. The Doom Blast does more damage as well. But the damage of the Doom Blast doesn't scale. Whereas in Elite, the damage of the Doom Blast scales as your Heretics HP rises. Could potentially see snipers to try and counter the havoc. Snipers do much more damage per hit in the retail game. We do have some rangers coming out here, so you can see they're back to their single long rifle. ASM are 50 power rather than 45, so it can be quite the investment to go for them. See, we've got some hidden sluggers lurking around the sidelines here. Of course, if they get near to the main line, fighting the rangers will detect them. I don't know what the plan is exactly. Burners, I don't know if they give them the HP buff or not, so generally not a great investment. <laughs> stun bomb, stun the chaos sorcerer there. Pretty epic fail. Investments of the war from the flame sword are legitimate. And that is a lot of troops to retreat for, including point blank devastators and even the retreat modifier there. It's not going to save those sluggers. They are going to go down. That was really quite a terrible engagement there from Brucey boy. Bruce, for some reason, upgrading to shooting knobs first before the big shooters, which is definitely a bad idea in retail. You definitely want to be going for the big shooters first because they're outrageous level of damage. But shooters nonetheless, in spite of that OP upgrade, caught out in the open there, fighting far too many opponents who are in cover with too few models. They've got to get out of there, and we are going to see ASM coming out for Cry. Bit of missed micro, I suppose, over there. Lost his Tech Marine, I guess, to the CSM. Kinetic Pulse to try and control the ticks. Seemed to work quite well. But only having one long rifle, not very good against heretics. So Bruce can replace the sluggers. Let's have a look at the eco here. Yeah, it doesn't really look like too much else can come out. Guardian's going to be super wary of that custom shooter from the Commando Knob. It will burn them down very quick. And there you go. Chaos Sorcerer is going to initiate with his Flame Sword Teleport combo. Now the K-Knob can go in and start bleeding Guardians. 
kind of. Teleport on the devs, there we go. Can he proc a special? Yeah, nope. We just kill the dev though. Wow, that is a long range stun bomb. Hey, he caught the ASM. But he has left himself vulnerable to the devastators. I think Tactical Marines have less HP as well in retail. I think they're 1050, are they in, in Elite? Are they? I can't remember. Wow, a lot of dead Eldar there. Yeah, running out into WAR boosted double for the upgraded shooters and a commando knob is not a nice situation to be in. Yeah, 20 power war truck is very good. So like I say, the death dread's kind of shit. It uh, costs too much and it's just not really very strong. But the war truck's amazing, it's only 20 power. None of the walkers in retail get melee resist, which makes them very questionable in a lot of instances. Melee walkers not getting melee resist, yeah, that's not, not ideal. Can be matchup dependent. Like orcs, if they're not the war boss, don't really have a lot of heavy melee in tier 2, so you can still get a Wraith Lord. Give it the shuriken, keep it in range stance, and you usually will be alright. Copper Rock? Uh, co Copper Pock? Copper Pock. Copper Pock. Copper Pock. Is gonna be going for Plague Marines. Plague Marines! Yeah, just ubiquitous in compositions for Chaos in retail. They're really, really strong. Their bolters do more damage, and their explosion is even stronger when they die. And the result is that they're just really quite ludicrous. They've also got four models as well, which normally would be a disadvantage because it means you get ranged damage bleed sooner. And you just bleed more in general, right? If you've got four models as opposed to three with the same HP and damage. But... Ooh. Wow. Havoc just slid the fucking Sarge there, that's crazy. Oh, can they get the wipe on the Havoc? Yeah. Now oh, they gotta get out of there, man. Oh, there's a lot of fire spot actually, I'm lying. Yeah, and then they had the Sarge on the way as well, wow. Sorted those sluggers out, good. But yeah, four models and Plague Marine is actually quite helpful for them because, of course, they explode, don't they, when they're killed, so. And they'll also heal the other Plague Marines when they die, which it just makes them so tanky and just a nightmare in general to really deal with, to be honest. Oh, also it's more HP regen. Because you've got 5 HP regen on every single model. So a maximum of 20, not 15. Let's see what this does. Yeah, wow, look at that. When the heal heals the other, the, the other dead models, it's just absolutely crazy, to be honest. And there it is, the cheap war truck depositing a whole load of shooters onto the battlefield. Now the good thing with the shooters is at least they don't scale past tier 1 in any way. Warlock better be careful over here. Keep an eye on his health bar. Whilst we witness the destruction that the shooters cause. Yeah, it looks like the Warlock just retreated out of that as soon as he's seen the sluggers coming in. Of course, Warlock there got no upgrades, not going to do a whole lot. Right, Lance is shooting the war truck. Does it get out? Yeah? Yeah, it just manages to. And a librarian for Cry. Wow, Cry does not have a lot of resources. I know he replaced the ASM Sarge, but geez. I guess he had to rebuy the Tech Marine as well? Not sure. He got the Sergeant on the Tactical Space Marine. Oh, we got a plasma gun too. Wow. Okay. Oh, sh. Alright. Yeah, he's, he's bought loads of upgrades. He's got Signum Armour, he's got Melter Gun, and now we're seeing the Bloodletters as well. Bloodletters are heavy melee in retail. And they actually have less HP than they do in the Elite mod as well. So it's funny, they're actually worse at anti-infantry than in the Elite mod, but... They basically negate all vehicle play. I mean, they can teleport in and deal with Fire Prisms very easily. So it is a little bit weird that Vagrant is going for the Fire Prism. To be honest, Vagrant going for Fast Tier 3 is also a little bit weird. 
But yeah, you can see here, Bloodlet has been heavy melee, not too fearsome. The amount of DPS they do to the tactical marines is not quite as high as it would be in Elite Mod. And then in Elite Mod, they'd have 20% more health, 1,200. Of course, they wouldn't kill fucking melee units, though. Uh, vehicles in melee. Ooh, bit of a tricky spot there. War Truck didn't want to move away in case the Tech Marine pursued and killed it on the move with a Melter Gun, but wow, this is so much bleed for Cry. Nearly losing the damn Librarian as well, but these Bloodletters need to be careful. Where are they gone? What? Ha! Huh. He teleported his entire army with the global back to base. Yeah, that warp global on the Sorcerer, a nice addition to the Elite mod for sure. Changed it so that you can actually target it on specific things. In retail, you use that global, it literally it teleports every single unit that you have to the Sorcerer. A lot less utility on it. And I think the Sorcerer really needs that utility to make him stand out compared to the PC and the... The Chaos Lord. Nice ambush here. Boom. Snary missile launcher. Ah, into blood letters. Yes, yeah, it's a dead prism. Chop, 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 chop. Oh, he messed it up. The second plague marine shot didn't come out. <laughs> wow. And the pathing of the prism was slightly messing up. Oh, now we're seeing Sigil of the Rift players. What the fuck is going on here? ASM to disrupt the plague marines, even though they got sigiled. Wow, but they still get the missile off from the prior prism. Still just within range. And you can see there, in combination with the heavy melee blood letters, that is going to be sufficient to take out the prism. Bit of a weird choice from Vagrant, really. He should know better. Since he was playing the retail game for a long, longer than most players. Should have known better. Blood letters are fantastic in retail against any tank. Never mind the fire prism, which of course has less HP and less speed than your conventional tanks. But Seer Council are exclusive to the Farseer in retail, so the only thing that Vagrant can really get is an avatar, and that's why I wouldn't have gone tier 3, I'd have just gone Rift Lords. Shuriken can and ranged Rift Lords with triple guardians to support it could have actually done quite well. Then later on you can go tier 3 and get D cannons. Smite does more damage than the Librarian in retail. It's a pretty absurd amount of damage. It's probably one of the only things that Smirian have that are actually too strong in retail. That and the Terminator Force Commander. I think the Terminator Force Commander is cheaper. Getting some Warlocks out at last. I don't really know what Vagrant's doing to be honest. The tier 3 is just a total waste. I mean, a lot of damage coming into the Plague Marines here. They are marked to take even more. Don't imagine this Sorcerer will last for long in this fray. Yeah, way too many units here, man. I don't know what this is. This is weird. He's like fighting. He's just sending units in one by one. And of course they're just going to get wrecked, they're fighting a whole army one by one. Silly. Sluggers managed to route the Triple Guardians down bottom, but the Warlock has something to say about that. But there is a Battle Wagon. That's going to be difficult to deal with. Now the Battle Wagon... Oh wow, he's calling in commandos as well, jeez. Massive power spike here for Bruce. This battle wagon is terrifying. It will, I think, give units in retreat with that roller. I think. Does it? Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, tearing through tactical space marines. Doesn't quite finish them off though. Going for a big shot with a cannon. Boom. Only clipped those guardians, but did a lot of damage nonetheless. Corn marines here for. Cockbuck. And a lot of boys gonna come out of that battle wagon. Oh, just heretics even. Wow, game looking decent right now for the blue team. I don't know how they're gonna deal with a battle wagon. No real AV on the field. Commandos as well for Bruce. Yeah, I mean, Bruce's composition, just amazing. Cockbuck kind of holding on for long enough there. 
Bit like Bruce wasn't really contributing to the other game. Not that much. But the war truck was cheap and just enough effectiveness, I suppose, to get him into tier 3 safely. I don't know what this is right now. What the fuck is he doing? He's depositing shooters on top of turrets. That's not going to be doing too much. You've got a Bright Lance shooting its ass. Battle Wagon does take that extra damage from it. Yeah. It's dead, man. Look at the arc on that Bright Lance. Beautiful, beautiful arc. Please tell me it's not going to live. There's no way. Dude, it's on 5 HP. Even Shuriken Catapults could nearly kill it. Oh, took it out with a smite by the Librarian. Beautifully done. I mean, absolutely absurd that they were in that situation. Holy shit. The Fire Prism shot afterwards as well, doing crazy amounts of damage to all the boys. I have no idea why Bruce was going into the base there. I mean, one of the big changes in retail is that there is no damage resistance aura for the base. Whereas you, you literally take half damage in your base in Elite Mod. So doing sort of rushes into the base with transports, with things like Blood Crushers, and of course super units, especially if you can drop a nuke as well, can be very effective. Cry there saying, go heal you warlock, I'll cap this with my librarian. Quickening on the librarian will not give him knockback immunity, so he's a lot more vulnerable in retail. You've got to be very careful. Oh, and subjugation. Subjugated units will take damage. So you can subjugate the enemy's unit and then have the enemy kill him. Or you can... Oh, I don't know what. I sort of missed that there. I was just staring at the librarian. But yeah, your enemy, if they are fighting a subjugated unit, they're just not going to attack it, right? But what you can do is you can use things that will do friendly fire to wipe the enemy's unit whilst it's subjugated, like subjugating the enemy Terminators and then using your nuke, Imperial Abyss, on the Terminators that you've subjugated. And the enemy obviously can't control their Terminators because they're subjugated, but then they die. And that's why subjugated units were made invulnerable in the elite mod. But whether or not I like that change is a whole different question. Definitely negated a lot of the value of that subjugate war gear. Big flesh hook on the tech marine there. Is he in trouble? Yeah, Slugger's going to grab him in retreat. Well... Another super unit and a looted tank for the blue team now. I'm not really sure how the red team are going to contend with this. There's another fire prism. But well, that's trying to duel a plague marine squad right now. And that is going to not be a good fight for them. Yeah, and a Laz Havoc behind it as well. Jeez. I mean, the prism will be able to chain knockback the, well, either one of these squads, but obviously not both unless they blob. The problem is it's going to take it so long using its disperse shot to actually take out the Plague Marines because of the HP regen. I mean, I can't imagine how long that would take. It'd be well over a minute. And he obviously wants the fire prism in the main action. He wants to be using it to contend with the looted, to chip away at the Guo. Put it into... Disperse shot and knock over all of those orc boys. But Vagrant securing this side of the map. Obviously, Bruce got most of his units around the battle wagon, which is on the other side, near the natural. Where is the battle wagon? Oh no, not the battle wagon anymore. The battle wagon went down. He's got the mini battle wagon. He's got a war truck. Yeah, he never lost the war truck, but he lost the battle wagon. How ridiculous is that? I mean, this game should have been over with a battle wagon purchase, to be honest, but Bruce, obviously. Partially trolling there with his massive commitment. And again, over commits. Pushing the war truck way too far forward. I don't know if you realise that there was a fire prism in play. He must have done. Surely. Maybe not.
Uh, we got a looted tank attempting to flank, but it's been itself chased by a predator tank and it gets caught in the ass by a predator tank cannon. That is the looted tank going down. I mean, I suppose there's potential here then. Trying to subjugate the ASM so that they're in like, they're behind the, the great and clean one. Yeah, hits it with a vomit and then they've got to retreat past him. Oh, the great and clean one just missed him. Fuck, that could have been a wipe on the ASM squad. Check out the damage they're taking from the damage over time from the plague bolts of the plague marines as well. Yeah, literally just one more swing from the Guo if it was positioned a bit faster. That would have been a dead ASM squad. Dark Flames. Cry's got red for an orbital, but orbital bombardment in retail is not very good. The distance... So do you know, you use the orbital bombardment, right? You click somewhere, and then you get a big circle where you can click two more for the beams. Well, in retail, if we say an elite mod, if I click here, I'd be able to click, like, here for distance. In retail, it's like a circle this big. It's ridiculous. It's a tiny fucking circle. It's like the Manticore circle. That's how wide it is, the orbital bombardment circle in retail. It's really small, and it makes it very bad. Because generally, if one beam's going to hit the enemy, the beams have such high knockback strength that it would knock the enemy out of the range of any of your secondary beams in retail because they're so tightly positioned together. Anyway, a really nice flank here on the Predator. We've got the Snare from the Plague Marines, and we've got Zinch Chaos Predator. Going to take that Loyalist Predator out pretty easily. D Cannon is in play along with Fire Prism and Melter Gun Tech Marine. Can they actually take out the Guo? Is he, yeah, he's riling up a vomit just to disrupt that D Cannon, but he needs to get out of there, does the Guo? He's getting chopped to pieces by a librarian, that's Power Melee. Where's the Tech Marine gone? Oh, I can't click the Tech Marine, I assume he's in the Webway Gate. The librarian got subjugated and sent into melee with a D Cannon. I really like that player, taking the D Cannon out of the game. And the Librarian, both of whom were doing a lot of damage to the Guo, but the Guo nonetheless is going to fall. Of course, that Fire Prism was contributing the whole time. Tech Marine pushing forward, trying to get range for the Prism, but this is actually a really bad spot. Prism too far forward, doesn't want to be trading 1v1 with a Laz Cannon Predator, going to get absolutely wrecked. One more shot from the Predator will be the end of that Prism. Of course, these Bloodletter Summons from the Demonic Summoning of the Chaos Sorcerer themselves will do heavy melee, because all Bloodletters do heavy melee in this game. We have 10 VPs, 9 VPs, 8 VPs and falling for the red team and I think that is GG. Scouts are on the point here but if Corn Marines kill them that will be the end of it. And I think the Corn Marines will kill them. No they won't. The Librarian is going to take over. Scouts knocking them away with explosive shot. Trying to stay in play. Wow. Quickening. Fail of time. Uh, you're dead. Must be quickening right? Must have been quickening. Oh my god. The pistol's nearly killing the librarian there. And Bruce Campbell has another battle wagon. What the heck? Suddenly, after that colossal fight, both teams and all four players have very few units remaining. But Bruce is using his cooldowns well. Another cooldown of commandos. Get him on the field instantly, no waiting for the build time. good dark flames. I'm actually surprised how little damage that's doing for the webway gate. I thought it would have done more. But okay. I'm not sure you'll get the revive there, mate. Oh, a little late there on the subjugate. Bang. Wow. Okay, saucer are nearly going down. I don't think you can cancel the subjugate. So that's the thing. It's a bit more high risk. The elite mod really does not like high risk, high reward. Uh, gameplay. Really don't like it. It's a shame, really. A venerable dreadnought. But there's literally a mark of Zinch Predator here. Which, to be fair, was getting wrecked by the D-Cannon and the Bright Lance. Oh, but they decapped the middle and they decapped the natural with the Corn Marines. Nothing got rid of the Corn Marines. Sneaky little bastards, eh? Corn Marines are great. Side cappers, really good. I like to see them in play as well. Yeah. Nice. Wow. There you go, boys. A bit of retail 2v2. What do you think of that one? 
strange one for sure. Bit of memory from Bruce, but yeah, it works really, doesn't it? It's going to be all for you, boy Toppy. This time, I am signing out. <laughs>